I want to bring in uh, Congressman David Cicilline. He's a Democrat. He serves on the Judiciary Committee as well as the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Let me get My your pleasure. reaction to the breaking news. Uh, Michael Flynn, once again, the former National Security Advisor to the President, testified uh, that communication from people connected to the Trump administration uh, and to Congress could have influenced his cooperation with the Mueller investigation. Is this new information to you and to your committee, or were you aware of all of this? Uh, this is new to me. Uh, this is very explosive, Wolf. Uh, I think it's very clear that this further supports the uh, urgent need of the committee to hear from Mr. Mueller directly, to get the fully unredacted report and all of the supporting materials, and to very likely bring Mr. Flynn before the committee as well. Uh, this, is, this is new information to me. Uh, it is pr presumably contained in the redacted portions of the Mueller report, uh, but is very relevant to the question of obstruction of justice. And it should be remembered that the special counsel found 10 instances where the president obstructed justice and relied on the OLC memorandum that said a sitting president can't be indicted as the basis not to move forward. So this is very, very important evidence for the committee to see. Do you, well, do you want to investigate this as another example of possible obstruction of justice? Oh, absolutely. Look, we, the reason that we are pressing so hard for the full Mueller report and all the supporting documents is because the Mueller report contains 10 specific instances where the president obstructed justice, and this is additional information. And, and now it makes sense that the president was trying, if you remember, to have Director Comey leave, let this Flynn thing go. And we all wondered, why was the president treating Mr. Flynn so differently, trying to get him, you know, getting the, uh, the FBI director to sort of let the thing go, never attacking him publicly. And now uh, we at least have part of the answer. So it's very important that the committee get the full context of this, the supporting documents, the tape recordings, if there are any. And again, this underscores the committee's urgent demand that these materials be made available to us so that we can do our work to hold this administration accountable, to make judgments about how to proceed and whether or not impeachment is appropriate. So this is further evidence of the need to do that. Who might these individuals be, Congressman, these individuals associated uh, with, uh, with the Trump, uh, the, the Trump organization, the Trump White House, uh, with Congress, who may have been trying to influence Flynn? Well, I mean, it, we, you, we just don't know. But we obviously know that, that those individuals need to be disclosed to us. It will, obviously, if they're members of Trump's inner circle, which we assume they are, that's very relevant. You know, what role they played uh, on the president's team, what, what were the nature of those conversations. I think Mr. Flynn will be expected to share those details with the committee and to produce whatever evidence he may have to support that. It's not just his sworn testimony, but he apparently has uh, documentary evidence uh, that is also going to be very valuable to the committee. So I don't think we should speculate on it, but it's very clear that this is central to the obstruction of justice conduct of the president, and the committee absolutely must have access to these materials and to this witness. Because Flynn also testified that the Trump campaign considered reaching out to WikiLeaks when John Podesta's emails became public. Do you expect more charges to come related to WikiLeaks, uh, for example, in the Roger Stone case or in other ongoing investigations? I think it's too early to know that, but we know there were at least 140 contacts between the Russians and representatives of WikiLeaks and the Trump campaign that were detailed in the Mueller report. So I think there's a lot of uh, information that relates to the conversations that were happening, why they were happening, what people knew. This, again, is the subject of our inquiry before the Judiciary Committee, which is why it's really essential that we get the fully unredacted report all the supporting materials so we can make informed judgments about this very, very serious issue. You're on the Judiciary Committee uh, where the chairman, Jerry Nadler, is working to have Mueller come uh, before your committee to testify. If the attorney general, Bill Barr, has no objection to that, as he's repeatedly now said, why hasn't your committee been able to set a specific date for that hearing with Mueller? Well, our committee staff has been in uh, ongoing discussions with Mr. Mueller's team. My hope is that he will come before the committee in short order. They have not yet reached an agreement with respect to his testimony or a date. But I know all the members of the committee believe very strongly that Mr. Mueller needs to come before the Judiciary Committee uh, to walk the committee and the American people through his report, to the judgments he's made, the evidence he discovered, the conclusions he came to. After all, this was an investigation that began on behalf of the American people because our country was attacked by a foreign adversary, our democracy. And this investigation was done on behalf of the American people. We, they paid for it. They have a right to fully understand what the special counsel found. And I hope he will come before the committee in very short order. The House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today 
echoed uh, the threat from uh, the Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler of using what's called inherent contempt to find those who defy your subpoenas. What's the timeline, you think, for a, a package, a vote on contempt? Uh, I think, you know, our committee has already moved forward on the contempt proceeding against Mr. Barr. There are a number of other committees that are confronting the same challenges. I think the idea is to maybe package some of those together to bring them to, to the floor for a single action. I think, you know, uh, that will depend in part on what the other com how quickly the other committees act. But what, what is very clear is that we are committed to making sure that we use all of the tools at our disposal, including inherent contempt if we must, to, to ensure that we get the documents we need to do our work, that witnesses are compelled to come before us to testify under oath. Because if we leave it to the executive branch and they get to decide who's going to be a witness and who's, what documents are going to be produced, the executive branch will have the ability to essentially extinguish the oversight function of Congress. We cannot and will not allow that to happen. It, it sounds like the speaker uh, is still leaving open uh, the, po the option of using impeachment proceedings in the House of Representatives, perhaps not necessarily to impeach the president, but to gain more investigative powers. At what point would you support going in that direction? Well, I think uh, Tuesday is going to be a very important day. That's when Don McGahn has been subpoenaed to appear before the committee. Uh, and you are absolutely right. Uh, Article 3 of the impeachment against Richard Nixon was based on obstruction of Congress. And it may well be that the, if the president continues in his effort to stonewall the American people, to prevent us from getting to the truth, to try to hold himself above the law by preventing Congress from doing our oversight uh, investigations, that that could constitute by itself a grounds for impeachment of the president or the opening of, of an impeachment inquiry. I think Tuesday is going to be an important day, but uh, the president's efforts, ongoing efforts, to uh, prevent the truth from coming out, to prevent the American people from knowing all of the facts, is, is something that in and of itself could be an independent basis for an impeachment proceeding. You, th you think Don McGahn, uh, the former White House counsel, will appear Tuesday before your committee? I hope so. I mean, he has been lawfully served with a subpoena for Tuesday. Uh, we expect him to appear and to testify uh, before the committee. And uh, if he doesn't, I think the committee is fully prepared uh, to move forward with uh, contempt proceedings against him. But I hope we'll hear from Mr. McGahn and that he'll come uh, as the subpoena requires.